Hi everyone. How's everyone doing? Sunday. Uh, welcome again to the Archetype Show. I'm Leticia Gillett, and this is sponsored by Lenovo. And uh, for those of you who haven't been here, we're choosing archetypes from the 12 archetypes from uh, Carl Jung. And um, this uh, few weeks that we're going to work, it's going to be the archetype Rebel. We started working last week. Hi, everyone. Everyone say hi. Hi, hi, hi. Can you guys hear me well? Everything's good? Nice. Uh, hi, Deljan. Hi, Daria, Maria, Khalil. Good to see you all. And we're going to continue what we started last week, which is basically we start doing the back, kind of like the, again, the contrast characters from our Rebel Girl. It's funny, I always like to start with not the main character because it kind of makes me like loosen up and start experimenting. So as you guys noticed, like on the past one, on the innocent archetype, I started with the creature, not the innocent lady. Because again, I like to like release my hand and kind of like let my brain flow. So uh, we're gonna continue working on the background opposite characters. And then uh, hopefully we start today also on our Rebel Girl. So, and but if anyone is wondering why I'm not doing the character, the main character is because I like to kind of experiment first with the secondary characters. And then when I go to the main character, I kind of have a better vision of what she needs to be, or he needs to be, or they need to be. Cool. All right. All right. So. Let's jump in. Hello, hello. How are you all doing? All right, let's uh, start. Hey, Willa. And all right, can you guys see that? I'll make it bigger. Cool. So this is where we stopped, right? Felipe, <laughs> move Um. So this is where we start, which is kind of like a side character, right? And I'm going to continue a little bit more on, like I said, I want to develop a little more the secondary characters, so I'm going to have a better vision for our main character, okay? So let's do just a bit more on this. Um, I'm just going to do a little quick dynamish again, so the ears look a bit better, yeah. Cool. And... Um, yeah, let's keep going. Oi, Marcos. Hi. Hello, Mateus. Mateus, grande Mateus. Okay, so this is where we stopped. We still need to obviously put the fingers and like, I don't, I'm not going to do much on the foot because we're going to put them some shoes. Hi. Art of Ortega. Miguel. How's it going, Miguel? Master of Masters, Miguel Ortega. Here, I gotta pretend I know what I'm doing. Cause he's the boss. <laughs> right, Miguel. Miguel also has a stream with uh, um, his wife, Tram, and they do the um, Hollow Right stream. Is that how it's called, Miguel? I watch it. Of uh, uh, this week was pretty cool. Hello, <laughs> someone said, Am I listening to things or are you speaking Portuguese? Just some hellos. Hola, hola, to the bay. <laughs> good day, yes, good day. Oh, Sunday is always a good day because I can sculpt and have fun with you guys. All right, so I'm gonna stop uh, spinning around. Um, Okay, so let's think about what we're gonna do style-wise for uh, this boy. Oh, gal, it could be. So notice that I pushed too far in. I, again, like I'm trying to do more, let's look at our reference. So I'm thinking of something a bit more flat, um, more 2D sort of thing, like Luca, like uh, turning red or like bad guys. So you gotta be, hi Maxine, hello from Ukraine, hello. Um, so as you can see, like the cavity of the eyes, it's very subtle, 
the area where the eyes are. It's very, very subtle, almost non-existent in a way. It's very little, see? So when you're doing that, this is something important to observe because look at how much I already did of cavity here. You see? There's a lot more anatomy going on on the skull shape. So I got to be careful with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feel back a little bit that cavity because I want, again, that's the style I chose. I want to make things feel a bit more flat and 2D. So when you're doing stuff like that, you got to be very careful on how much anatomy you're putting because it can break the, the illusion. This is... Um, now it feels much more flat, you see? And I think that's going to be better for us. Okay. So let's think about this. Just a bit more cheek. Okay. So, um, all right. So now is the time that we're going to think. We're designing and modeling 3D, right? So it's not like I'm, I'm just going to copy something. So. Now is the time that we're going to think. Uh, that's where I like to draw a little. Like, what am I thinking, right? So we could do maybe uh, kind of like this size of eyes going on. And then it's going to be like something like this. Oh, that was horrible. Okay. Something like this. Or we can try to go much more kid-like and make it much bigger eyes, you know, and what makes something look cute and kid-like also is how close to each other the eyes are, this distance here, okay? So um, if I do something smaller and farther, it ends up feeling a bit older, where if I do something bigger and closer, it feels more sweet, you see, more sweet and more infant feeling. Also, the where you place the eyes, like if I place the eyes in compare with the nose, right? If I place the eyes a little more uh, like in the line of the nose here, it makes it feel younger. See what's going on here? Makes it feel younger. Because when you're trying to do a young kid, this distance, like when you take the eyes and uh, nose and mouth and you make it closer to the eyes, it makes it younger, where if I make the eyes farther, let's say like, no, nah, my drawing skills are great today. If I make it farther, he, he looks a bit older. Can you guys feel that? I hope that's clear. So for example, if we look at something, let's look at our reference. If we look at something like this, look at how much like the nose is closer to the eyes. The eyes are very close to each other. The distance is very small here. And then the pupils are close to each other. So it feels very young, right? Where if we get a character that looks a bit older, you can see that the eyes are a bit more far apart and the distance of the nose to the eyes is a bit more far apart. And still a young kid, but not as young as this one feels. You know what I mean? So we got to think about that. Um, but, but, um, if we look at Luca though, like it's, it's interesting because the eyes are pretty far apart, but if you notice the nose, you see the eyes are kind of like close to the nose, but they're far apart. So it's cool. You can see here, nose very close, smaller eyes for the older character, nose a bit lower. So that's just an idea if you guys are making like you know, young characters and stuff. Uh, so let's experiment with some things. So what I'm gonna do, if you guys have any questions about what I just said, put it in the chat. What I'm gonna do is just gonna get a, a sphere and place it where the eyes will be, just so we can get a feeling. Again, because we're designing while we're doing it, we gotta experiment. We can't just like, oh, the eyes are gonna be here, boom. No, we gotta play with it a little more, okay? And also one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the eyes a bit flatter, just because um, if we look at the reference here, 
the eyeballs are pretty flat, especially if we find some uh, profiles. I don't think I have any, but you just got to trust me. <laughs> I think I have any profiles. But yeah, we just make the eyes balls a bit flutter. So here we go. It's a dog, it's not a cat, but it's the size of a cat, yes. <laughs> yeah, but there, I have two dogs. They're called Sadie and Hazel. And they are little wolves. Yay. All right, so let me feel this. So we can start feeling it. It's going to look a bit creepy. But look at the difference, right? Far, you have one vibe. I put closer, you start getting a different vibe. I can put lower as well. And then we're going to get a different vibe. So we just got to test it. I really like what they did on uh, Bad Guys. I'm, I'm not going to do as big, but it's pretty good. Oi, Elisa. Elisa's here. Got to do it right. Got to do things right. All right. So I'm just going to try to make it closer like this. And uh, now you can see like the cheek are kind of penetrating a little bit on the eyes, so we can just push this back. I used to think it was taboo to flatten the eyes. Now, everything is good. Well, you know, it's going to be a different type of rigging for flat eyes than for the spherical eyes, you know. It depends, again, on the style of the character you're doing. So if the show has a certain style, uh, they need to adapt to that, right, to make it work. So, um, we'll do something like this. And then you can think about it. I'm just going to subdivide a few times, and I'm going to paint some irises. If I do something like this, I kind of get the feeling. I thought that was a crime. Yeah. Nothing's a crime. You can do whatever your heart desires. It depends. Well, if you're doing for a production, you know, like I said, it needs to be something that is set in the production. Okay, we're going to do this because our characters have, um, we want a more 2D look. So we're going to make it the eyes flatter. So, you know, it's not like you can do it. You, you need to check. If that's going to be the path production is going to go in. So I'm just giving a little bit of brow ridge here, a little bit of volume. Okay. And um, let me think of something here. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to do this black pupil thing. I like to do something more like what they did in Turning Red for the eyes, so maybe we can paint a little bit that. I'm going to go back and paint again. Okay, so let's do something like this. Yeah, try to model uh, Dragon Ball Z characters before you have to flatten the eye. Yes, exactly, you have to. Then with the airbrush, I can go here and pick, like, maybe they have these kids, they have uh, blue eyes or something, I don't know. And then we can just go here and do, for now, I always like to do this, which is, I call, like, a little bit of highlight thing. And then we can paint the eyes later a bit better. But for now, I just like to do this little highlight like this. So we can kind of get the feeling. What's going on? Cool. All right. Um, all right. So now I'm going to try to structure a little bit what's going to happen around the eyes. So let's think about that. And if you see here in Bad Guys, they put like a contour, a black contour. Not sure if I'll do that, but um, we can think about it. Okay. So let's see how we can hug the eyes a little better. So I'm just going to. Push some of the volume. 
so it feels more spherical. Okay. And uh, one thing we can try to do is, I did that on the creature last time, is just we append the torus uh, ring, and then we can use that very thin lids, block a lid, and we see if it's going to work. I'm not sure if it will, but I always like to try, because it's a nice way to, to block some lids. Whew. Sorry. All right. So let's do some lids here. Okay. And if you guys have any, at least um, I, I still need to give you feedback. I didn't forget. But just some. Yesterday was my husband's birthday. So we're just eating cake, having fun. All right, I'm gonna do something like this and then slowly I'm just gonna nudge a bit to create a shape. And uh, this. Thank you. <laughs> Don't say that though, because I'm I'm slow in life. <laughs> All right. This. So we can kind of frame the eye for now. Looks a bit weird, but you know, we kind of see what's going on. If we put the black color, we can see like maybe it needs to be a bit thinner overall. And uh, here, but that's not what I'm the style I want to go now. That black puncture. I'm gonna flatten the eye just a little more. Push it in now. Okay, so let's see what's going on. Oops. Mirror. I, think I broke my mirror here. All right, anyone watch to Sea Beast? <laughs> Tell me what you guys think. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I've worked on the Sea Beast as a this that character model. I did a bunch of stuff. I can show you guys if there's one. Um but I watched it and I really, really liked it. I think it was a beautiful movie. So, what do you guys think? Yeah, funny. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. but it was a great movie to work on. It was a great experience. Okay. And then we can think about a little bit about the brows. Again, like, look what I'm doing. I'm just trying to put in place everything, all the shapes, and then we can start changing more the design. Okay. As soon as I saw that blue guy, I knew it was your thing. Yes. <laughs> Everyone's saying that. Because <laughs> I do like cute creatures a lot. That's uh, something I do love it. <laughs> so, um. Okay, let's do some brows. So here, just gonna do a little shape, simple shape. We're gonna reshape it. So it's just for now, we're gonna do an extract. Thickness. And let's accept. Get a smooth. Do a quick zero mesher here. Right, that, that looks low res enough for now. Okay. 
So now I can just uh, shape a little and um, do like a dark blonde for now. Not going to worry too much about color. All right, so let's do way thinner. A lot of um, I want them to feel like angelic and, you know, I'm going to do everything very soft and thin. Boy subs of this year. Time to do stuff. Okay. So since they're going to be singing like, you know, you know what music I thought they would be singing? When I was a kid, we used to sing in Portuguese, the Portuguese version of uh, Imagine from uh, John Lennon, the Beatles, whatever. Um, so I'm just imagining they're like, you know, you know they're like singing. <laughs> and then uh, she's just rocking that song, right? But they're singing like very angelic. You know, and then she's just like having it. She's just rocking, like she's singing like a rock star, and they're singing like it's it's like an angelic song. Hi, Viana. Hi, greetings from Brazil. Hello, hello. Oi, 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 oi. What do you guys think? They're singing Imagine. I think that's a good one. Try to make the eyes a bit closer still. We're gonna make the eyes just a smidge closer. This. Yeah, I think that's good. So now that we have most of the shape, so imagine um they're gonna be like imagine all oh, they're saying all oh. so I'm gonna be making like a O or all shape, something like that. <laughs> that could be cool. I'm gonna make it a little bigger just so it's more cartoony. Whoa. <laughs> I'm gonna be laughing because I like to laugh when I'm modeling. <laughs> I like to connect with my cat. All right, so. It's gonna be like the imagine all people. Yeah. Uh, for the eyelids, one thing I like to do is sort of like you see the topology here has a ton of edge loops. So I'm gonna get the Z modeler. And I'm gonna delete some of them to create a sharp line here where the eyelid uh, break ends, right? Because we know that the eye, we have the eyeball, and then the eyelid comes kind of following and then it breaks, right? It creates this plane here. So right now what I have is that I have the highball, eyeball and then I have this rolling like this. So I'm gonna try to break to create some contrast, okay? So let me go here and I'm gonna go to delete edge loop. Lay at the step you start to think about the final expression of the character and that pose of him, what? Lit. At that step, you start to think about the final expression. Yeah, you can't be thinking at all at once. It's a mess. When you're concepting, you know, like I, I like to think about all at once. And again, because I'm not doing like production model, I'm just thinking about what can I do to um, already set myself, you know, to succeed with the facial, expre facial expression, I'm not gonna do any other expressions on it. So it's fine to just set now the facial expression. So as you guys can see here, what I said, you see I'm breaking a little bit the, the shape here. Is that, is that answer what you asked? Okay. On the Instagram, you have said you made a video for two characters. Can you please tell one more time what it is exactly? So, yeah, for sure, Daria. So the video is, I was in the art team instead of being on the production. So we have art team, which normally is 2D people. And then we have uh, 
the asset team, which is what I am at Disney. I'm part of the asset team, which I am a modeler, right? But at uh, Netflix, I was on the art team. So I was helping art flesh out how the, the character is supposed to be. So I was not thinking too much about topology or anything like that. I was just really doing what we're doing here on the stream, to be honest. Like I was just trying to find the best shapes for that character. And then I send the model uh, to uh, the peeps up in Sony Animation. And they were the ones who did the, the production uh, stuff. So they picked my model and did the production model. So in that sense, I was a this dev modeler because I was just doing um, the art models, you see? Normally, the art models, if you look at a company like Pixar, for example, Pixar hired uh, like physical uh, sculptors like Andrea Blasich or uh, Greg Dykstra, where they would sculpt in not in digital play. And then they would give those models to the asset team and they would uh, make the production models, right? But um, at Netflix, they hired a digital sculptor like myself to do that instead of hiring, uh, you know, maquette people, uh, real, real clay people. So that's what I did. Is that clear? I can give more examples if it's not clear. All right. So since they're doing all, I'm going to project just a little bit. Hey, Leticia, I have to see you back for episode two. Yay. Have to see you. All of you. All right. So um, now we can play a little more. Charles Kill it on the Beast. Yes. That beast was so cool. I, I I worked with Charles on that show. Those of you who don't know Charles, he is a he was my supervisor when I was at DreamWorks. He's just amazing, uh, very inspiring artist, so hardworking guy. And I worked with him at DreamWorks. I also worked with him at, with him at Netflix. And um, he did the Sea Beast, the big red. Beast, and I did the little girl and the the blue character. Some stuff I'm gonna be posting this week. A lot of the stuff I did, basically. Right. Okay. So now that we have some shapes in place, let's talk about if we can push a little more some stuff, right? Like I said, I put the, the pieces, it's always nice to put the pieces in so you can kind of feel it. But for example, I feel like this distance is too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take probably a lot of this stuff here. And I'm going to move it forward a little. So we can. That's not what I want. More forward like this. Need to move this a bit. Drawing. When you do the biz dev, do you also choose colors and materials and real hair make renders to present? It depends on the show. Like uh, on that show, I, some characters I had more time to do that kind of stuff. Some I, some characters I do not have enough time, so you know you gotta do the minimum to represent the model. But it also depends on the studio. Some studios they like the vis dev very fleshed out. Some they only want like a good model with some nice lighting to see how it's feeling. So I would say is is studio dependent. Um, how much do you do? Netflix, you, I'm going to keep posting some stuff I did. You're going to see that some characters I did much more than others just because of they, we had the time or the importance of the character, etc. So, so let's think about this here. I'm feeling pretty good about this proportion, but we can experiment. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to go up here, copy to paste tool. So now I have a duplicate. 
and we can play with uh, some proportions. What could we do? We could make it look younger. Again, like if we move the nose closer to the eye, they're going to look younger, right? So we can make that. I'm going to open the mouth a bit more. And then let me just fix this area here. So, so let's go back and forward. So you see how it looks a bit younger? Could do that. I went too far. Okay. We could also test um, maybe very small brows and like way more arched like this. Like uh, higher. You guys can suggest stuff too if you want. I always love when you guys suggest stuff. Um, thank you for the answers. Very interesting and beautiful characters. Thank you. Yeah, it was very fun. Like uh, being on the art team, definitely a different dynamic. You know, I learned so much. Like, I don't know if you guys know who Tony Fuchilla is. He is one of the Pixar designers for a long time. He did basically created the Incredibles style, Incredibles, the movie. So he's like a legend, right? And I got to work with him on this show, on the Sea Beast. And, you know, when you're like, you meet your hero and he's even more awesome than you think he's going to be. <laughs> that was Tony, man. He was like so humble, so nice, so like... Uh, open for suggestions, you know, and, and like, here I come, right, this little shit that I am, and this guy's like a legend in the industry, and I'm like, what if we do this, what if we do that, and he's like, so open for ideas and suggestions, so it was amazing, it was an awesome experience. All right. I think, what do you guys think before, now? I think that's cute, right? Okay. Also, we need to give a little bit of side hair and stuff. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to mask kind of like a, a hair area. Just like this. Just so we can have some under hair. Let me do it again. No, that's not what I want. Like this. Okay. And then I'm going to do an extract. A little more thickness. Oh, wow. Not that much. Extract, yes. Accept. And then smooth a little bit for now. So we can kind of have that feeling of the side hair. Wait a bit. Uh, any tips on how to learn fast? Tips on how to learn fast. A good way is to balance studying and doing. Some people think like if I watch 300,000 tutorials, I'm going to be amazing. And that's just not how life works, right? You got to be patient. You got to study a little and put it to practice until you feel like you solidified that information. And then you go back again, you watch a bit some more of some information, and then you study again, put into practice. I think having this kind of balance between studying and um, doing, it's, it's a good way to uh, improve, you know. Um, Again, like, we got to be careful. Sometimes we all trick ourselves, like, oh, I'm going to watch 10 hours of tutorials today, and I'm going to be amazing. And that's not just how reality is. We really have to put into practice what we learn, or else it goes away. There is some research that says that after you watch more than an hour of a video, 
about 70 to 90 percent of everything you learn goes away in your brain in your brain if you don't put into practice in 24 hours so uh, that's scary right sad and scared <laughs> that is the truth so you gotta be very uh very careful, you know, we all go through this of like watching a ton of tutorials and feeling like we're learning. But again, like if you don't put in practice fast what you learn, you will not remember. You will have a feeling that you remember. But how many times, I'm sure many people have been through this, that you watch some tutorials and then you go do it and you're like, oh, how was that thing again? Because it's this. It's just how the brain works, you know, in general. I mean, there's some people that are very good um, memory and they can retain a bit more. But this research I mentioned is based on, in general, how uh, most people, we forget pretty fast uh, if we don't put things into practice. So is that clear? Um, yeah. Ah, Felipe. Okay. Felipe is saying that this was him when he met me. That's right. I've already forgotten half of what you said. Yes. Yes, it's true. And I, trust me, I try so many times pretend that that was not true, what I just said. And like, watched like, three, four hours of tutorials. And then I open the software and it's like, I can only remember like 5% of what I learned, you know? So fortunately that's, that's how our, our brain works, you know? Again, most of us, some people are a bit better at this stuff. Like my husband, for example, he has much better memory than I do. So he retains a bit more. But, you know, he's not like any uh, genius or anything. Like, he still forgets a ton. So, uh, but some people have more um, luck, let's say, to have a better brain to retain stuff. But again, I wouldn't say they're retaining everything at all. So, I, hey, Sandro. Yes, and watch to understand and not just to repeat every mouse click. Correct. If you're repeating, like you're watching a tutorial and the guys do like, now we're going to do this, then you do that. Now we're going to do this, then you do that. You're not really faking. You're just copying. So got to be careful with that too. You know. So what I like to do normally is like if I'm watching a tutorial, I watch about 20 to 30 minutes. And then I stop and I try to put into practice what I learned, you know. Right now, for example, I've been studying Blender, and that's normally what I do. I watch about 30 minutes, uh, 15, 30 minutes, and then I stop, open Blender, and then I try some stuff, and then I go back, you know. I'm good, Sandra. How are you? You doing good? Oh, well. So, yeah. So that would be the work with intention also is something that I say a lot, but like, like what I just said, right? When you're watching the tutorial, I like to take notes. I can show you guys, look, look, look at this. This is perfect to show. I'm gonna put myself bigger here so you can see. All right, so see this? This is what I do. So I pick a bunch of paper, see? a Bunch of paper here with notes. And then I put them together like a little book. And I just take a bunch of notes. So everything I need to learn about Blender. Why do I take notes? Why well, I can go back to the notes, obviously. I also can, um, when you're writing things, you having taking the time to understand what the person says so you can write correctly. So the writing action is so important to help process information for me, at least, you know. So it's one idea I can give. I always take notes when I'm studying because it helps me absorb the content I'm studying, you know. Even if I only look at those notes like once in my life, but the act of taking notes is what is important for me, not so much the, the notes that I need to be perfect or anything like that, you know. Um, 
Wes said, yes, I did that when I was starting Blender. Funny thing is whenever I take notes like that, I don't even end up needing the notes. Yeah, exactly. Same thing for me because I end up remembering because the notes, taking the notes is not so much the notes, but the act of taking the notes that helps a lot. And I agree 100%, at least for my kind of brain, right? Some people are different, but for me, that's what I like to do. Right. What are you guys feeling about this? Uh, it's pretty generic, which is what I want. The more generic they're going to feel, the better our character is going to stand, right? So again, thinking about contrast, if I make them too unique, our background characters, we might lose the attention of what, what matters, is, which is our girl, right? So that's why I'm trying to keep it uh, more generic. So I think I'm going to dynamesh the lids now, or we could keep it separate. We could keep it separate too. Let's do... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, let's work on the hand a little. I'm going to also save it. And all right, I'm not digging him being blonde. I'm just gonna give a little kind of like a brown hair, like brown instead of blonde, just for now. Okay, yeah, I like that better. Maybe this school is in Brazil, so they're going to be a little more Latinos. Maybe move his eyebrow closer to make other expression. Now he seems very scared. True. This seems a bit scared, doesn't he? All right. Let's think about this. All right. Why does he look scared? He has white eyes. Maybe I rotate it too much. Maybe we need to rotate in a little more. Now that you mentioned, I can only see him scared. Him. Okay. Maybe what's going to happen, we might need to... Not make so open, round eyes, maybe? Are you good drawing and sculpting? Or for sculpting, you must be good at drawing? No, I don't think so. Like, I'm certainly not good at drawing. Um, I mean, I think drawing, like any other skill, painting or, or sculpting, clay, whatever, is always going to help you be a better sculptor. But uh, again, like, I don't think you need to... Uh, drawing is just a... a a different skill as sculpting, right? They both comes from the same world, which is curiosity and observation, right? That's what a lot of what makes an art, right? An artist is being very curious about the world and shapes and be very good observant. And both to sculpt or to draw, both 3D or 2D, takes the same things, right? As painting, as writing, Right. If you're a writer, you're also an artist, and that all comes from this, right? Curiosity and observation about the world, and then trying to translate those things into a writing or into a painting or into 3D or 2D. So the only difference I can say is that a 2D artist, because of the media itself, sometimes they they can be experiment more. Right, they draw much more than we sculpt, let's say, because it's faster overall, right? But I don't think we need to necessarily be good at 2D to be good at 3D. Again, you can experiment in 3D, like we've been doing this in this um uh, in this streaming, right? And um but what I could say is, again, like any, any other aspects of um, art in general, painting, writing, photographing, right, taking photos and stuff, 
all of that helps you as a better artist because of what because you observing and having being curious about the world in different medias so if you draw you doing what exercising observation and curiosity if you sculpt what are you doing same shit if you paint if you take photos so what i would say is that some people they do 2d and 3d what they're doing is that they're like observing and being curious about the world in more than one media and that can be very helpful because it helps each other right it, it's all a matter of like things that support each other let's call it you know so i for example i don't draw much at all i like to study drawing like watch people doing and i try to put into practice on my 3d work uh, but i know some people that do both and it works pretty well for them you know so again i don't think you need to be good at drawing to be a good 3d artist you just need to keep observing the world and then uh, you're going to be good regardless if you draw or if you paint or if you take photos. But if you do those things, it might help you because, um, like I said, you know, it, they're all exercising observation. They're all exercising observation, which at the end is what makes you a good artist. Observe and try to interpret what you observe in different ways, right? So that's what I think, right or wrong, but in general, how I feel. What do you guys feel? You guys feel like what I said makes sense? Um, right? Thank you, because this is the most comprehensive explanation that I heard. <laughs> nice. Yeah, no problem, Andre. Um, I, you know, I put a lot of thought into that question because I, I asked that question many times myself to myself. And that's kind of where I got. <laughs> I may be wrong, but that makes sense to me. Again, that's, that's what my reality, right? I don't know if I'm right up. That's how I feel. All right. So when you're doing like, oh, doing this shape of a mouth, you kind of only see the, maybe a little bit of the upper teeth and a little bit of the um, tongue, right? So I'm just going to make the mouth bag a little bigger. I think there's truth to what you said. I think that when you start any form of art, you do have some adventures that carry over from the other art form. Yes, I agree with that. I think like people that express their curiosity and observation in different medias, it kind of, again, like, you know, it opens a universe to observe things uh, more. So you become maybe a better observer, maybe, you know? Um, I agree with that. Like. I I feel like, yeah, I, I agree with that. So I'm making a little mouth bag where it's going down, you see? I always like to do that because it's going to create like a little shadowing. So it's not going to feel like his mouth bag is you know, shallow. So we can always bring down like so. And then, oopsie. Okay, so now it feels a bit more lower. And need a bit more floor here, though. So I'm going to move this back. More floor for the mat. And let's put a little tongue in there. So like everything else in my life, I just get a sphere on for the tongue. Up here. To the artist that gets into 3D, gets so good so fast. Yes. Why is that? Let's think about it. Why sometimes 2D artists, they get so good at 3D so fast, right? Because the most important thing in art is not what software you use, what pencil you use, none of that, right? The most important thing is 
how much you train your eye to observe things, how much you train your uh, shape language to work, all that good stuff. So a 2D artist, when they're already good, they have the most important thing already, which is their eyes are trained to see the shapes, to interpret shapes, to understand light, to understand form. So in general, that's why 2D artists, they get very good at it because they already have the most important thing. The software is the, the what is hard about a software to learn is having patience to understand how to make those shapes in, in that software, right? So if they have that patience, they have it all because they already have the most important part, right? So that's why, like, sometimes you see 2D artists trying 3D and they do, like, super cool projects right away because of that, you know? Oh, oh, I think the tongue needs to be back. I'm just doing the shit. All right, we're going to figure this out. Um, stream up time. Okay. So... That, that's how I feel, like, when you see a 2D artist just like, oh, I just started 3D next last week, and then they're doing awesome stuff, and you're like, god damn it, right? And But why? They're so good already, because, again, they already know the most important part. Now they just need to know how to use the pencil, the ZBrush pencil, or the Maya pencil, or the Blender pencil, right? Uh, so if they have the patience to learn those tools, they're going to be good very fast. And that's why we got to uh, not hate them so much. Why they get so good so fast? <laughs> because they've been training the most important part for a long time already. So, I feel like maybe the, the upper lid needs to be closed a little. We might need to try that. Let's see. Um, I'm going to duplicate. Let's try one thing here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the eyes. I'm going to inflate a little. I'm going to put the skin tone. I'm going to crop to make eyelids. See? So maybe they could be. Uh, not feeling it, but it's at least good to show you guys <laughs> something. Let me see. You like this? What's going on there? Here. Nasty stuff is going on. Just fine for now. I'm just trying to get the feeling. Um, at the moment, I'm sculpting character. Wait, did I skip anyone's question? I feel 3D is somewhat liberating for 2D artists as they don't really have to worry about perspective rendering instead of focus on form, anatomy, proportion. Yeah, yeah, that could be very liberating. Uh, at the moment, I'm sculpting character. It's so much struggle right now for a simple character. ZBrush has dirty traps. Yes, I think everyone here can say that they, they face some painful moments with ZBrush, you know. Um, I did, I did for sure, you know, like, um, if there's something in ZBrush that only time using the software is going to teach you that those things are going to happen, they're going to be painful, but then you learn how to go around them. So I would say, yes, you just have to keep going and getting more, um, um, what's the word, used to ZBrush, uh, weirdness, you know what I mean? How did you crop? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so any object, if you get the gizmo, let's say my gizmo is here, right? And I want to crop his legs off. You hold control and you click on the scale 
So right here, I'm getting the um, white color, right? The green. So if I hold control, click and drag, it's going to propsy the shape. So that's what I did with the eyes. Let's go. I don't know how I feel about this eyelid. I really don't think I like it. So I'm going to turn it off for now. And it does make him them a bit more relaxed, which might be good. But I don't know. We'll see. I'll keep it for now. And we will feel it. Ah, I'm not going to keep it. We we'll try again later. All right. We definitely need something. I don't feel like this is working because they he looks very scared. We still see some of the teeth, so all we can do is append a cylinder and just for now make a uniform sort of like cylindrical teeth shape. I'd like to do that when I'm blocking. I just um, put like a cylinder shape to place as teeth, and then later on I'll I'll make some real teeth, you know. But we can put this in here, and then we can see the the teeth going on. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Closer. All right. So let's do just a little bit of work on the hands. And if you guys have any questions about hands, now it's the time. But I'm just going to do a little bit on it. And uh, just want to make sure the ears are very round for me. Oh. Okay. When you're doing this shape also in your mouth, like the jaw, oh, you, you know, your chin goes down a lot. So I need, I probably need to lower more of the chin like this. Yeah. And then here, your cheeks goes in more. And I give just a bit more teeth, shall we? Just for now. Yeah, that's looking better. The jaw. Okay. So, uh, I saw your last stream in which you put nose separately, but how do you blend it in even if there are separate options? I did Dynamesh. So this is a Dynamesh. Dynamesh puts all the meshes together, right? I like I, I put it all in the same subtool, and then I gave a dynamesh, and then now they're part of the same mesh. Oops. Hola, hola. Right, so um what is it gonna do? Oh the hands. So let's go to the hands. So what I'm gonna do now is this is like the whole volume, but I'm gonna shrink this to make it more like a palm volume now. You no, know, so this is gonna be more the palm volume, and then we're gonna place some finger uh, separate. So this we can work with this, make it way thinner here, right? And just a little bit of our hand anatomy. Uh, you can think about it as like this, right? You have this this sort of shape, like this, looking from the top, and then you do a little bit of an arch, going down like this up here, and then you start putting the fingers, right? So this will be like a pointy finger, then this, then this, then this. So you can see that the knuckles they do an arch shape like this. Okay, careful, don't make it straight. That's very ugly. All right, and then we're going to have here, we're going to have our a shape, little support for our thumb, okay? So this is normally how I think about hands, okay? So normally the distance from this knuckle to here 
is the same distance from this knuckle to the end of the tip of the middle finger. Okay, so this is the same as this. Okay, so again, important thing is to think about this arch. So the fingers are not aligned perfect one to the other. They are different uh, distances, right, on the, on the hands. And then on profile, we have uh, this shape here, right, which is like this. So where the fingers, here we have those pads, hand pads, right? And then here we have just a little shape like this, and then the fingers are going to come out, okay? And then let's say the, the, what's the name? Like something like this. So, um, yeah. So that's what I'm thinking when I'm Wally, right? I'm going to make this area a bit thinner on where the fingers are going to come out. And we can use even the um, edge polish to kind of block it more. Here's the side of the hand. I'm going to block it, right? Make it more blocky. So here's the side of the hand. Here's the top of the hand. Here's where my fingers are going to come out. So I can make it flatter now like this. And then here's going to be flatter overall and thinner. Then here's going to be a bit fatter. So I'm just making it blocky so it's easier for me to uh, know what's going on. And again, remember that we just talked about looking from the top, like so, we're going to have that arch. So what I'm going to do here, here's where my, my thumb is going to come out. Wait, sorry. I'm looking the opposite way. Okay, here's where my thumb is going to come out, right? So again, like this, it's a high point. This is going to go lower because this is where my... Um, Pinky is going to come out. Okay, so there's a, a slight curvature going on. And I'm going to do it even more. I'm going to push it down more. Okay. So now, when I put my fingers, there's this arch going in here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give a little more volume here. This. Now I have a bit more blocky idea what's going, what's going to happen. I can look from the back. Here's, you see, now we have that, the shape like this. Choo, 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 choo. So here we have the pads. Here it gets thinner. It's going to come out the finger. And then we're good to go. Adriana. <laughs> Thanks, Adriana. <laughs> so sorry to be asking so off topic from what you are doing, but what environment artists would you recommend as inspiration professional? Oh, wow, there's so many <laughs> environment artists. Uh, I can definitely bring next time like a list of some good people if you wanna see. Uh, there's a lot, if you research, there's a lot of cool environment artists um, from Disney, from, it depends, right? What style of environment you're thinking of? But if you're thinking animation style, um, most people are on our station, so if you want to check it out, they should probably go to our station and type type there on the environment part to take a look at it. Uh, Jay said, you can also pull out the bottom front edge to represent the, the webbing between the fingers. Yes, for sure. When we put the, put the finger, it's going to work very well. Cool. So that's kind of like a very blocky feeling for the hand, right? And then again, making sure I have that arch. If you don't want to think about arch, you can think like this. This is where this is going to come out. And then this is the high peak. And then it goes down, right? So now I have like this, and then this, and then this. So you can think about that instead of thinking of an arch. All right, so let's see. Now we have it ready for fingers, right? Might be too long, but we can fix it later. So as simple as we did for the thumb, I'm gonna get the um, my little ball thingy, and I'm gonna make some fingers. So, make a little finger shape like so. Then come over here. Again, if we place first the middle finger, so let me 
Do a little angle. We can crop just to the light. See? So if we think about the middle finger here, uh, what did I say? Normally, the distance between here to the knuckle is the same distance from the knuckle to the tip. So is this is the same as this? Almost there. So I'm going to keep it like this. Now I'm thinking about the thickness. If I want to, if I want it to be thicker overall, which I do, and I'm just rotating to see if there's anything else I need to do. Maybe rotate it like this. And obviously, we don't want to have it fat in the center. Like this. one thing I like to do sometimes is to make thick to thin. So I make it thicker and thinner in the base, and then a little thicker, not too much, but a little thicker in the tip. And then here, we can make it flatter in the top. Finger in general is a bit flatter in the top and a little rounder in the bottom. So that's what I'm doing. Like something like this. He's not giving middle finger to anyone. Nice tutorial, awesome. But I'll, I'll catch you up later because night night around 2.30 a.m. Oh my God, go to sleep. Like you can watch it anytime. <laughs> sleep is so important. <laughs> Go to sleep, please. All right. So now we can take this and we can duplicate. Uh, and then we can make it again, like we can make this a bit smaller. And I can rotate out. I always like to rotate a little so they're not super close to each other, the fingers. So rotate like this. My brain explodes when I see someone sculpting a closed fist. Yeah, closed fist is nice. It's a very nice shape. It's good, it's good to do a sculpting because you get the gesture better. All right, so now I'm going to take the same finger, which our um, ring finger is normally similar to our index finger so in size sometimes a bit smaller so it's gonna put it here and then last but not least i'm gonna duplicate this one make it smaller and then place it back here and i need to double check the sizes still but i'm just placing for now something like this might need to move this one in a bit more like this all right so very weird but it's gonna work let me just put some color here okay so let's think about this right it's very weird but it's gonna work so let's think about it we did this we did this we did this great i might need to fill out this volume and then here we can think about having this structure and then the Thumb is going to come out, right? And then here we have this finger, okay? We have this guy, okay? This guy, and then this guy. In general, if we think about the knuckles, so the knuckles are here, right? So if we take from the knuckle to the tip, divide in the center, it's going to be the middle of the finger, of each finger. So I'm going to do this, this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. This, this, okay. And then if you divide this part in the middle, it's gonna be where the other um, knuckle is gonna be, right? So now we can see that this is kind of in alignment here. This one, uh, it's proportions are actually going pretty well. So, all right. So I'm just gonna make sure to fix this this thing here. We can work a bit better. And then for the sum, what I'm going to do is just give a little more gesture to it. So in general, we have this, this, and then. Now I'm going to think about the gesture of things here. This. And then.
Това е Gonna rotate a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna rotate this guy a little bit. That's the I copied all wrong here. Okay, whoops. All right, so they're on the same place. It's fine. Just trying to give some gesture. So I like to rotate the pinky and then this guy a little bit just to give a little bit of relaxation to the hand overall. And um, yeah. Now I'm just going to shape a little better here. Some stuff. Okay. I'm just gonna move this guy in a bit. So yeah, the thumb is looking really horrible. So let me do some work here. This smaller, it's too big. And we can think about the thumb. It normally has a little volume here. Then it goes in. Look at your own hand and you should be good, hopefully. Uh, again, like I'm, I'm just giving some shape, some uh, nice shape to it. Nothing crazy yet. We, again, I'm not gonna push too hard because I like to bring everything together in the same pace, right? Sometimes I like to give this volume here for the thumb, kind of like connecting to the pad of the hand. So, as you can see, I'm just like trying to connect where the pad volume would be. So, if we think about, um, if we separate here, right, there's this volume and this volume. So, it would be something like this. All right, I think it's looking fine for now. Pretty ugly, but we'll get there. It's a bit smaller. Okay. So let's pretend this is it for now. We're gonna dynamesh it and then we can work way more on it. It's normally what I do. Okay. So one thing I like to do is just try to connect a little better. That helps when you dynamesh. And we have enough distance. We don't have enough distance here. I'm just gonna make sure we have enough distance between fingers so they don't combine when I dynamesh, you know? So I'm just gonna make sure I have that distance. Okay. And then I'm gonna mirror, I'm gonna combine everything, all the fingers. I love the art style so much. Leia, what did you think of the movie Turning Red? I love Turning Red. Turning Red is one of my favorite movies. I love the art style. I love the story. Um, I I really loved it all. Did you like it, Lisa? I love the art style so much. Yeah, I love the art style. It was so refreshing. It was very nice. 
merging the fingers. Where's the thumb? Thumb is down there. Um, being a 3D artist, I love that this is my passion. I'm inspired by games, so I want to work for games, but from financial perspective and also about skills, should I be working for all studios? Up to you, like I, I worked, even though I wanted to be in animation, I worked for games because, you know, I got paid bills, but I, I loved working for games. It was such a surprising thing for me because, like, I was, I was like, I knew I was going to have fun, but so much fun working games like i worked on on the game called overwatch uh for, from blizzard and it was one of the my favorite experiences of places to work and people and and all of that so hey it's up to you you know some people like to be very straightforward of what they want i knew i want characters you know i didn't want to do environments nothing like that so but uh Working games was so good. It was so fun. I loved it so much. So it's up to you <laughs> if you if you feel like you want to explore other industries or if you need, you know, to pay some bills and you get the job, then you got the job. And you know, yeah. Um, as a char um, okay. I realized making characters in ZBrush is ninety percent moving. 10%, yes, especially cartoon characters, I'll say. It's a lot of moving. So it's losing movie move tool all the time, right? Um, so yes, I agree. Uh, Lisa said, the expressions of the faces, I was laughing at every scene. Yes, they really pushed the expressions a lot on Turning Red. I love that as well. It was so cool. That movie is great. I really liked it. Um, it was very funny to me. Right, so we did this. Now we're going to do, uh, on the foot, I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm just going to give a little more foot shape to him. So we know that the foot has a little arch like this, right? Goes in. And here's a bit more straight. So I'm just going to do a bit of foot anatomy, but it's like he's wearing some thick socks or something. So we're going to do this. And then looking from the side, we know we have a, a higher shape here. And then he goes thinner to the toes. Also here is much more smooth. So I'm just going to smooth overall. We might have too big a foot. Let me try to... Make just a bit smaller. Uh, it's getting cute, Liv. I live. <laughs> I hope so. That's all you can hope. It's gonna look cute. So again, I'm just giving a little bit of a foot shape. You know, that kind of uh, shape like this. Again, the foot, same as the hand, has this arch. Here will be the thumb, right? And then you have this going down like this, where the other fingers are going to come. The other fingers, the other to toes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm just doing that. Looking from in here, looking completely wrong. So I'm just going to do a little bit of shaving here on this volume. Here are going to be the toes. You know, simple. It doesn't matter too much. Just trying to give a little bit of a shape to it. So you can also use like a, a sharper thing, just kind of separate like this. See? Pretty cool because you can see kind of like where you want those shapes to be. So now I can come here and make a plane out of this, like this, and we can push it in more. Starting to look more like a foot. This. Okay. Okay. This is how much I'm going to go here. Let's give a bit more on the back. I shape too much. And I think it's still too big, his foot. So I'm just going to 
make a bit small. Overall, I think the foot can go back more. Just gonna take it all, smooth a bit, and push it back. Now we're talking. So. Yeah, that's really much. Okay. Here's gonna be the heel, right? So I'm just gonna make a bit rounder overall. All right, cool. All right, so it made the foot too small now. I need to scale up a bit. <laughs> I was not looking at the hole. That's what, uh, this is one of the biggest mistakes I just did, right? I was looking at too close. I was not looking at the hole. What happened? I messed it up. So I need to make his foot way bigger. Like so. Yeah, it's really better. So be careful. Don't do what I just did. You gotta look way, way more far all the time. Zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, right? It's really better than safe. I just love my intentional ever brush stroke kiss. Yeah. This takes time, you know, like it took me a lot of time to be, to work with a lot of intention. I think everyone in the beginning, to be honest, we all, we all work a bit without intention because we're kind of like afraid sometimes, right, uh, of, of shapes and then we just want to find them as fast as possible. And that's normal. But the moment I was able to start working with more intention, that was when I think it clicked for me. Like, I think I started becoming a better artist overall, you know, like really thinking about every stroke I make. Uh, that was the big change for me, I would say. All right, that was decent foot. <laughs> Great, but decent. All right, the Overwatch heroine may look like you. Is that a self portrait or not? You're talking about Tracer? It was not definitely not a self portrait. Um, um, Tracer uh, was not done by me, and that was not even on the the game yet. Working on the game when she was made, but a lot of people say that, <laughs> that Tracer. I kind of look like a little bit like Tracer for me. Now that I'm a bit chubbier, I think I look more like me. But uh, yes, that was not me. <laughs> That's not me. At all. Um, all right, cool. Now that we have all that in place, like I said, I'm going to keep the eyelid separate for now, but we're going to do a dynamesh again so we can put together the fingers and then we can do a little zero measure to um, get better topology because right now we only have a dynamesh, right? So I want a bit more intentional apology. So I'm going to merge down the fingers to the body. So now we have all this, right? And we're going to do some, I'm going to duplicate and we're going to do some zero meshing here. So before I do zero measure, I like to do some zero measure guides, which is just to tell the zero measure kind of like, please follow my guides and it might do it, it might not. But I like to think that I have some control when I do the guides like this, like telling the algorithm, like, please, please respect my guides. So what I'm going to do here is this. And you don't need to do a ton. I just like to do mainly on the face, to be honest. So here I'm going to do a little raccoon mask like this and see if zero measure is going to respect. You see that connected here? I don't like that. So I'm just going to do it again. Something like this. And uh, I like to do one also to separate the, the face mask, I like to call. So I'm just going to do like this, which is going to be the face mask. Like so. I don't do much on the body at all. I don't care for it. So whatever your measure gives is going to be fine for me. 
So after I do this, like I said, I'm gonna do zero measure. Uh, here inside the measure, uh, I'm gonna put about maybe 15K polys. And on the curve strength, I'm gonna put super high. So it forces zero measure to follow my curves, hopefully. And uh, that's that. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna put 10, 10K and see. All right, so let's see what happens. Do we have loops for the mouth? Do. Yay. Do we have loops for the nose? Kind of do. Yay. Do we have loops for the raccoon mask? No. They, it didn't make it. So that's fine. It made this weird thing here. That's fine too. Did it make a loop for the ears? Very bad. Did it? Oh, I didn't dynamash the fingers yet. That's why, oh no, we're gonna have to go back. Go back, go back, go back, go back, everything. I didn't dynamash it, my bad. So before we need to dynamash the fingers, right? So again, I'm gonna zoom in in the fingers because I really wanna make sure that they don't connect, they don't glue to each other. So I'm gonna put a high dynamash, doesn't matter, just to hold the shape. I'm gonna do dynamash, ew, nasty, look at that. We do not want that. So we're gonna, how, what, how do we solve it? We do a higher dynamic to the tongue, just to see. Oh, beautiful, much better. So now I can just smooth a little bit here, finger areas. Uh -huh. And then we're gonna work a ton on it yet, so we don't need to worry too much. Just gonna smooth a little. And then, um, now it's gonna work. So let's do again our zero measure guides. You can see here. The zero measure guides, I already have it on with me. So since the eyes are not like the lids are not connected to the eyes, anyways, maybe I don't need the raccoon mask. So I'm not gonna worry too much. We can do a loop like around the ear here. It's a nice one to have. I'll like separate the ear. And then I'm gonna do that loop for the face mask. Oops. Then we can come around. That was too close. Oh, I did it on the wrong side. A second. I, I hate when it glues like that. Okay, it's gonna work. I have faith. Okay. All right. Face mask done. Da -da 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 -da. All beautiful. Now let's go to again back to zero measure. And I'm gonna put 10K strength, blah, 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 zero mesh. Let's see what happens. It's taking a while because my, my dynamesh was so high to hold those fingers that it kind of got a bit slow. Let's see. Oh, no. This is horrible. I do not like that. But I do like the rest. Decent, let's call it. So let me smooth here. Yeah, no, I do not like that. So I'm gonna go back. Well, actually, we can go. We can go here, and then we can do a zero mesh again with the same amount. To see if it's gonna solve that. Yay! Look at that perfection. So now we have a loop for the mouth. We have a decent loop for the nose. At least it's going like this. The ears are kind of nasty, but you know, whatever. And then the hands are. That might be sense. This, this will do. We don't need much. All right, so now we have this. Since our model is so simple, now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna even project the details because 
what details? We, we have almost no details. So I'm not going to even project anything. I'm going to keep the mesh like so. I'm only going to project the color. So how do we do that? I'm going to hide everything. And then I'm going to show it our models. So I have this one with the color, right? And then I have the bottom one, but I only want to project the color. I don't want to project the details. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my model that I want the projection. And I'm going to go to project, but I'm going to turn off geometry. I'm only going to keep color. So if I say project all now, do you like project poly painting? Yeah, that's all I want. So now if I hide the other model, we have our new topology with the color. Again, right? It wasn't anything crazy I painted, but it's just to show you guys that if you want to paint, if you painted something, you can just project the painting. So. Now I can delete that old model. Bye. And then we have a model. I can make some poly groups. I always like to do this where here in the mouth, for example, I'm going to select the loop of the mouth like so. And I'm going to make a poly group. So now I can separate this. See, it's easier for us to do anything we want with the mouth bag or the lips, etc because it's separate. So that's pretty good to do. And uh, that's that. So I'm going to uh, subdivide two times this model here. One, one subdivision for now, so we can go slow. And we can now play around with much better topology. This ear topology here is really upsetting me, but I'm gonna try to push it through it, but it's really not what I would want. Yeah. Yikes. But yeah, it's going to keep it that way for me. Okay. So what else can we do now? Let's put some sharps. Everything's pretty soft. So what I'm going to do is make sure I have some sharps to create what? Contrast. So very slow sharp here. We might want some nostrils, not sure. I think in turning, oh, look, on bad guys, they have no nostrils, but I think in turning red, this one has no nostrils, but I think on red, they do put nostrils. What about Luca? Maybe I'll do like Luca. Let's see. Uh, let's try it. The only way to know is trying. So I'm just gonna push it in a little bit. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm just going to push it in a bit. And I'm going to give a little more shape to the wing of the nose. Kind of like what Luca has. He has a little more sharp here as well. Mine is very soft here. So I'm going to go here and just mark a bit more the wing of the nose like this. Yeah. Very little. You see how this kind of character is going to be very, very slow. For the lips, we're going to have to figure it out what kind of shape we want for the lips. If we want more like really simple, just doing that. This might be the play right now. And then on the ears, I'm just going to sharp a little more as well, the detail here. Whoop. All right. Cool. Okay. So we need to do a lot more work in the hands. I'll probably do it during the week because uh, I don't think we're going to have much time. But one thing I have to do on the hands is to separate some of the polygroups. So I'm going to show you all. Like, I like to go here because it's easier to sculpt when you have the polygroups. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take right about here where the hands are and uh, get this guy and invert. I'm going to do a polygroup like so. And then I'm going to polygroup the fingers. So I'm going to select like this, polygroup this one, get out, and then I'm going to come here, polygroup this one, take it out. I go one by one. 
And, and then it's easier to select them and work on them later. So it's a nice thing to do if you want to help yourself with the work you're going to have to do on each finger. Um, yeah, so now you see I have polygroups for everyone. That's nice. Cool. All right. So, but yeah, it's looking horrible, but it's going to look good. But I have faith. Uh, okay. Looks super cute so far. What hotkeys are you using to make those polygroups? Oh, so a, a easy way to do that is you. Oh, hi, Nikki, by the way. How are you doing? <laughs> Ah, Nick is an amazing, amazing uh, look dev artist, also modeler. I've seen your model. You model pretty well, too. Uh, but she's a great look dev artist. I had the pleasure to meet in one of our interviews I did. Not interviews. It's kind of like a, a chat time with artists. And Nikki was there representing. It was like about women in animation, I think. Something like that. The talk we did. And... Um, I got to meet her on an event and I fell in love with her work and, and her. She is a beautiful person too. So, all right. So, trying to learn from the master. No, I'm no master. All right. So, what I'm going to do here is like this, Nikki. I, I normally take the gizmo. If you click and drag holding control, click the drag, you see, it kind of makes a topological mask. So you go any vert that you want to go down. So I click on the vert with control and drag. So you create this topology selection. And then after you make the selection, you can do control W. That's by default in ZBrush. And then it creates a polygroup from the mask. See? So that's very useful. Uh, if that's not clear, let me know. I, I can show it again. So, yeah, I really hate those hands, but we're going to work on it. So, I'm not going to suffer too much. <laughs> Trying to give some gesture here to the hands. And the fingers are, it's a mess, but we'll get there. Now, because I have, um, I can kind of close the hands a little bit because now we, we already dynamesh it. I'm just gonna make sure that the fingers are not so rotated anymore because I don't like it. Okay, it's more like that. This finger feels a bit too fat. All right. So again, I'm gonna make sure I have that uh, that sort of like angle going on, which right now it doesn't feel like I have anymore. When I dynamesh it, so again, look, I'm pushing this back, I'm pushing this back. So we can have that dance of the na nature of the hands, basically, right? I'm going to push this back a little more. And now it feels a bit better as it should be. But like I said, we can do the hands on our time, continue doing it. The palm is very long also. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mask all this area, invert, and I'm going to move this up a bit. Like this. Soften the mask a little more. And then move this up a bit. Yeah. That looks better. I can just make this shorter as well here. All right. And probably the hands that I need to be bigger. Scale. I keep saying I'm not gonna work in the hands anymore, but I keep putting back because it is it is annoying me a lot. So I'm just going to scale up a bit more. Let's take a look with the hole. I think this size like this should be good. Tiny hands. Yeah. 
And then we can work more on the hands later. We're gonna make the sleeves longer, just to cover a bit more of the arm overall. Right. And uh, I think it's time for us to do a bit more on the hair because the hair is gonna help us feel happier about it, about the moths. Because I'm not happy at all. So the hair is gonna help, I think. It's gonna make this longer. All right. One last thing. I think the arms are too long now. Well, how we test the arms if they're long? We test like this, right? We make a mask and put it here. So normally by the uh, pubic bone, uh, it's where the wrist rests. So it's actually not longer. Oh, it's pretty good. So the back and then I'm like this. All right. So what can we do for the hair? Let's think about it. I was looking at those references and we saw, look, they, they really have those bow cuts going on pretty good so i think i'm gonna keep it like that um yeah i think it's gonna have to be able to cut like this so one thing we got to think about is that the back of the head is is wider than the front so it's going to give a little bit of that gesture right here also we can do a little more gesture on it and the bow cut it's it's some of it at least right it's like they take like right about here and they start doing like this almost like right the hair so that's just something to think about it because we might be able to choose like okay so it's coming from about here so we can push that area in a bit actually let's let's look for reference for a good time to Boots here, bow cut. Let's look at some reference. Okay, so if we look here, like what I said, is that there is a little area here, right, where they comb the hair going all the way like this. So uh, where is this point? We can think about it compared to the years. It's right, like if we think here's the front of the years, we can think it's a bit behind. Or we can just look a little more, some other images. Yeah, so it's a bit kind of like behind the ear. And it goes all the way like so. So we can think of that. I'm going to throw my topology here. So right behind the ear will be this point here. I can push it in. So this is where that area is going to go. And I can make a little shape like this. And then now, we're gonna have that deep for now. We're gonna sculpt it, right? But just so I know where that is coming. And maybe also we can have um, covering a bit more of, of it. Maybe also not so rotated. Maybe rotate more like this. Okay. And um, Give a little more square shape here instead of so round. Okay, cool. All right. So we have that, and let's check it out. Some of it is even covering the brows, which I don't want, but I'm just looking. I think I think we did pretty good. Maybe I'll push it in more like this. If you guys have any suggestions, feel free to send it. And then here we can connect a bit more, give a bit more volume here on this hair. And on here. Let's look at our silhouette also, what's going on. I might push this back a bit more. And maybe take a little of the volume here from the back. A 
Okay, uh, I have an object, but my gizmo is elsewhere. How do I get it back in position? Great question. Um, so if I have a gizmo here, but I want my gizmo down here, let's say, right, I'm zooming in here. You can hold Alt and you click on anywhere. Alt, click, you will bring the gizmo to where you are. Alt, click, see, anywhere. Cool. All right, so let's think about it today. Uh, I think we have pretty good shape. One thing I wanted to test, oh yeah, for the hair, I'm gonna think uh, how we wanna do the cuts for the bow cut. To see how like it has some gaps and stuff, some of the flow. Um, I wanna keep it very graphic, so I don't wanna scope too much. I think we're gonna to have to do a few cuts here. Like imagine this. Like we're gonna do like one cut here and then a little cut, some something like this. It's gonna go. So we might we might do some cutting to be able to have that shape like this. Cool. I think also I have too much volume on the sides here. I'm gonna push it in a bit. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, what is it going to do? Uh, oh, yeah. I want to try something with the lid. Please repeat. Repeat what? The gizmo? The gizmo part? So for the gizmo, if you want to take the gizmo anywhere you want, you hold Alt and you just click on the area. And then it's going to go anywhere in the mesh that you need. Is that is that what you're asking? Uh, Khalil? Okay. So for the lids... I want to test one thing for the lid. So, like I said, um, maybe the top lid could be closed. Let's see if we can make that work. I'm going to delete a few edge loops here because it's so heavy. So, I'm going to delete every other one. So, I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to take this, going to take this. Just to make my mesh a little less dense, it's easier to control, remember? So, I'm just going around and deleting. Some edge loops here. Doop, 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 doop. All right. So now it's a bit more. Might do even one more time. So I'm going to delete. Again, the lower, the easier to control, right? So that's what I'm trying to do. Right? So this is much lower. Cool. So. Let's think about if we want to close the lids, this lid specific, make it close, it's going to be very painful. So I might want to divide uh, what's going to be the front of the lid, right? So I'm going to insert edge loop right here. I'm going to insert edge loop here. I'm going to make a Polygroup, so we can mask by polygroup. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna expand my selection, invert, and this is the front of the lid. See the part that we see on the character. This, and then let's separate what's gonna be the middle of the lid, right? So with this selected, I'm gonna separate it kind of like. This area here, it's going to be the middle. So now we have this selection like this. So I'm going to mask just the top part now with the topology. And just I'm going to do very dirty, just so we can feel it. I'm going to start pushing this to kind of make it feel like it's closing deep. Just so we can feel it, okay? So let's see. It might work. It might work. Better do properly, but again, like you've got to test it, right? So I might push more this side, right, to make more this sort of shape like this. You know? But again, I'm going to have to do it properly. Uh, but I'll do that when we're posing. So it will be something like this. 
I think it's gonna work. What do you guys think? You guys think this will work? If we do properly? I think it might work. But for now, I'm gonna keep this separate. And let's see what they wear on the shoes. Okay, so it's just pants and some regular shoes. This is cool. Like doll shoes. But for now, I'm going to give him some pants under. So to do make the pants easy, right? We can just go here, select the topology that we want for the pants. So like the pants gonna come from here. So we can do something like this. I'm gonna invert the mask and then I'm gonna extract the pants. So we go here, extract, boom. Ooh, very fat. I'm gonna do with no thickness. So you can see now, extract, except we have the pants here, right? Like this. And now we can delete down here the shoes. So if I go here, I'm gonna select where I don't want anymore. And then we can delete the shoe, the feet area. And now we have pants. Uh, again, I haven't thought too much about the color palette of this character, but let's give some dark, um, I don't know. Let's make it longer, the pants. Let's see what's going on here. Where are the pants? Oh, they're right here. We just need to like do something like this. And then maybe like this. Little gesture. Again, like try to avoid keeping things parallel. If you can give gesture to stuff do it so you can see here instead of keeping like the pants like this i gave a little bit of a, a angle that makes things more organic more natural so that's what i like to do like this cool and then um let's think about it for now i'm just gonna put this color from the color that we did I'm not thinking of color palette. We're gonna change the colors probably. So I'm not too concerned. And for now, also we can just paint the shoes on the body. We can just make a little mask for the shoes like this. And then we can just paint that for now. So I'm gonna isolate the shoes and let's paint like a dark, dark brown shoe color like this. Oops. Um, that's too dark. Let's do a little lighter. A little lighter, like this. All right. For now. Cool. All right. So, um, I think we're right at the end of the stream. Uh, so next week, I'll probably do some work on the hands. I'll show you all. And if you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, I'll probably work a little bit on everything, to be honest. Uh, this week, I think I'll have more time. This past week, I had zero time to work on anything. So I might do a few things, and then we can talk about it. Um, yeah, the neck looks better now. Right. And any final questions before we go part ways? And then again, next Sunday, I'll show you guys some progress. And then if you have any questions about what I did, we can definitely talk about it. And uh, uh, we're going to also next week, we're going to start our main character, which is going to come from this character. So the base mash is this one now. I'm just going to make a variation of this. And uh, um, yeah. Cool, Elisa said, thanks for the stream. Thank you for coming always. And uh, it's always fun. It's always like I get lazy, you know, like, oh man, I'm gonna have to model a bunch of stuff. But then when I get here and we start working, 
I get in the groove, which is nice. So, yeah. Hold this in a bit more. Well, like I said, I'm going to work on that hand later. I keep saying that and I keep doing it. So let's save it. And then next week, like I said, we're going to start the our main character. Uh, this one's going to be pretty much done. So I'm going to show you all and then you can all ask some questions if you want. But then we're going to start a main character from scratch. Not from scratch, but from this base mesh, we, base mesh we're going to make our main character name. All right. Thanks, Leticia. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye, Daria. Bye, Alex, Elisa, everyone, Khalil, Felipe. It's looking cute, Leah. I like the eyelids. Reminds me of Luca. Yeah, I think it's going to work well. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Natalia, thank you. All right. You all have a great rest of Sunday, and I see you all next Sunday. Uh, the previous parts in the playlist watch yes kaiba it's all on the playlist you can watch the beginning of this character there's also the past project we did is all on the uh, nomen channel cool all right see you all next time <laughs>